As we transition into the firewall capability of the NSX Edge and the distributed firewalls, I want to take a few minutes and just kind of go through basically how some of this stuff works at a high level, just so everybody's on pretty much the same page. So this is going to be more of an overview than anything else. We're not going to get into any configuration of anything in this video. So there is a firewall feature capability in the NSX edges, both the ESG and the DLR, as well as the distributed firewall. So first things first, when it comes down to how the NSX firewall works, it is a stateful firewall, which means that any connectivity that's going through the edge or a distributed firewall is kept track of. However, it is not a next generation firewall, which means we're not going to be doing deep packet inspection or intrusion prevention and any of that whiz bang wow stuff. Now, this again, this is NSX for vSphere. There are going to be things that are going to not going to be translated over into NSXT, which is currently working on a distributed IPS solution. But as of right now, we are not talking about next generation firewalls like Palo Alto or Cisco Firepower or any of the other vendors out there that that um, market label their firewalls as next generation. Because we're not next generation, we're going to be focusing mainly on layer three, layer four communication. So we're going to be looking at source destination IP, source destination port, the transport, maybe some little bits of stuff that can be matched on in the IP header or in the, the payload, like a TCP header or a, a flag of some sort, stuff like that. So if we can extrapolate the information from our layer three, layer four information. And what I mean by that is if you were to see UDP port 53, that's typically going to be tied to DNS. So then you know it's a DNS type of traffic. Now there's two different types of, uh, well, let's talk a little bit about firewall rules. You have When it comes down to the firewall rules, we have a couple of different things that we can take a look at. So let's go take a look here and look at firewall. The firewall rules, and as you can see right here, I have just a basic operation set up here. We have the firewall rules. We have the default rule down here at the bottom, which is in position number three, which means it's gonna be the last one to get processed. Remember when we set up the edge services gateways and we went in there and configured the def um, the automatic generation of firewall rules and to basically put a permit any statement in there? That's what these guys are for right, right here. So we had the default rule, which is a permit IP any any. Same thing with the routing here. We have both TCP port 179 to any destination and OSPF any any because we're running OSPF and BGP on this particular router. Then we have this internal one VSE for firewall capabilities and stuff like that. So this is an internal rule. This is an internal rule. They were automatically generated by the firewall upon creation of the firewall. Now, when we talk about firewall rules, there's a couple things that you need to be aware of. The first one here is when we create a firewall rule, here's the rule, right? We, we would give it a name and it's automatically <laughs> gonna be given a identifier. We can see the type is set to user. Now the source, if we were to click in here, we're gonna have a lot of options, okay? So we have objects, right? If we wanted to use a specific object, we can come in here and use any of the security objects that are available to us. If we want to be specific to a down to the virtual machine, we could, if we wanted to take that a step back and be specific to any virtual machines on a logical switch, or if we wanted to be specific to a distributed port group, or if we wanted to take it a step back and be specific to maybe a resource pool, or maybe even a cluster, or even further back from that, an entire data center. The cool thing about this is, is the granularity is it's up to you and how granular you want the firewall rules to be. Now, if you have a specific virtual machine, you can grab the virtual machine and whatever VMs are available in that data center, guess what? They're gonna show up here. IP addresses are pretty much the same way. If there is a specific IP address, or well, you don't have a, a group that you wanna pull stuff from, you can add an IP address in here. So you can type 10.1.1.10 if you want, slash 24, or uh, we'll go ahead and do that, right? And then I could save that as a specific IP address that we're gonna um, call from. The same thing with the 
destination would be the same thing, right? And if we wanted to be a security group, it could be any other thing besides that. If it's a virtual machine or if it's a, a cluster, we can pull from a cluster, so on and so forth. On the service, the service is going to give us a lot of flexibility too. We can be specific. So for example, if I want to match on a service group, I can look through here and be like, is there a specific group or application type that I want to match on? Maybe I've got a lot of a particular flow type that I want to be specific towards, which the cool thing is, is when you bump into any one of these options. So if we come back up here to, let's say, Microsoft Exchange Unified Messaging, there's going to be several different protoc or protocols that are going to be added to this group. So you don't have to go through and identify each one or try to figure out what it is. The firewall has already gone through and figured all that stuff out for you. But if you want to be specific to a, a specific service, you can as well. If I wanted to put in here a DNS and do a question mark for it, it's going to look for to the two different types of DNS that are out there. And then you'd be able to match on those. So those are some of the things to keep in mind when you're doing that. And then I have my accept, deny, and reject. Accept means, obviously, forward. We have the deny option, which is obviously going to drop it, but reject is going to be more of a drop it, but also log it at the same time. And then we could log here. And if we wanted to add in any rule comments, we could. If we want to look at any advanced settings, like which direction are you mapping this to? Um, how do you want to match on the traffic? And then if you want to look at any statistics, what, how the firewall rule has been matched on. So I'm going to go ahead and just revert that back and say, yes, I want to revert, which means I'm going to get rid of that rule. That's how you would do it on the edge services gateway. Now there, like I mentioned a minute ago, there are two different types of firewalls. You have the edge firewall and you have a distributed firewall. The edge firewalls are going to sit either on the edge services gateway or the distributed logical router. If you want to do distributed firewall, you need to come over here to firewall. This is your distributed firewall. And this is how you would, if, if you're going to do any east-west communication, for example, if you want if you want to block traffic that's got to go from one logical switch to the other and communicate from, say, a Linux VM to a Windows PC or whatever the case might be, you're going to want to leverage the distributed firewall for anything that's going to be happening with inside of the, the network itself. Now, documentation is kind of, I don't want to call it wrong, but depending on what you're doing, I've used the, the logic of you have on one logical switch and you have another logical switch. Two different subnets, they're going to need the DLR to communicate back and forth between the two different segments. Well, I did some testing and I, on the DLR I created some filters. The filters didn't trigger, right? I had some a deny any any for a particular type of traffic between two endpoints and the DLR wasn't triggering. But the moment I took that same logic and put it on the distributed firewall, boom, it kicked in right away and my traffic was dropped. So you have that. Now, when we break this out, you're gonna have a, you're gonna add a section and a section is gonna have multiple types of operations going on towards it or you can add a rule and then when you're in a new rule, you're going to have the same thing as we talked about before. You're going to name it. You're going to give it a, a source that you're going to match on, so on and so forth. So nothing has changed, right? The fire, the logic is still the same, right? But now instead of putting it at the edge of the either the DLR or the ESG, you're putting it on the distributed firewall. So it's happening at the, you're doing this at the, the more, more or less the NIC level of the ESXi host. So you're going into, I'm sorry, the, the virtual machine. So the VM is attached to a logical switch. If I wanted to be specific and block traffic between two different VMs, I can do that at the distributed firewall level if they're in the same subnet. You can't do that with the DLR or the edge services gateway. So if it's traffic is going from the inside of the network, inside the NSX environment northbound to something else, in the environment, then you would want to use a north-south firewall. If it's going to be staying with inside of your environment, going east-west, you want to use a distributed firewall. That's usually how I correlate it. So 
keep things like that in mind as you're going forward. Now, if we come over here to Service Composer, Service Composer's got a lot of stuff in here that you can add. If you were to come in here and click on Add, you can add a lot of capabilities. We'll go ahead and we'll just give it a name for just to populate some field. We have, you know, a lot of options and stuff like that that we can go ahead and and edit. You know, we have dynamic neighbor membership and some other stuff that we can add this guy to. I'm going to go ahead and just delete that for the time being. We have our security policies. If we want to add a security policy to whatever it is that we're doing, we can uh, guest introspection, firewall rules, network introspection, things like that that will come into play as we're going forward throughout our setup. Firewall settings. We can go in and add some options to this. Like we can uh, import rules and things like that. If we want to set up some timeouts, we have that as well. If we wanted to exclude something, like so if we have system excluded VMs, you can see which VMs are getting excluded from the firewall rules because we don't want them, we don't want the firewall to break their operations. So if like, for example, if I had vCenter server working in this environment, you'd see vCenter server hanging out in here as well. This is system excluded VMs, user excluded VMs, we could put that in here as well. Application rule manager, if there's something that I want to dive into and analyze the flows, for a particular set of devices, I can start a session between X, Y, and Z and figure out who's who. So I can say test, and I can say I want to manage uh, to inspect traffic between LVM1 and WinVM1, right? And then I can say I can start capturing the traffic data on there and see what that looks like. So if there's something going on, and I'm not sure why, I can do a packet inspection. Not everybody's going to have the ability of doing a span connection in the switch or doing a TCP dump and things like that, this will definitely help out with that. Spoof guard. Anybody here that is familiar with DHCP snooping, this is essentially what this is. If you click on here and you go to add, you're basically turning on dynamic ARP inspection and DHCP snooping is essentially what's happening here. We'll be taking a look at that later on. So you have groups and tags. So if you wanted to come in here and start grouping things together. So this is gonna be something that and if you don't want to do individual mappings of devices, this is where you would do this. IP sets is obviously going to be a range of IPs. MAC sets is going to be a set of MAC addresses for layer two filtering. If there's specific services, maybe you've got something in your environment that you want to, a custom built application that isn't listed here, or you need to add something that isn't already defined, guess what? You can add that in services, and then you can tie multiple services together into a service group. IP pools is the same thing. So we can we have our IP pools here. We can go ahead and create those. Uh, you know we created these when we were deploying the environment. But if we wanted to add another pool here, we could do that by setting it up here. Security tags. If you wanted to associate a tag to a particular thing, you could do that as well. We're going to be walking through a lot of these features as we're moving through. So I want to just give everybody a kind of a high level of what's going on. We also have flow monitoring where we can take a look at what's going on between a couple of different devices and see exactly how everything's going through. We can use trace flow. We can actually use this to take, an op take a look at how everything's operating in the network. We can do a packet capture. So if you're, you know, you're not sure what's happening, you can do a, basically a spam port. And IP fix would be net flow basically on steroids. So if you want to push data out to another device to see what's happening, you can put net flow in play. We're going to take a look at this stuff as we move forward. I just wanted to give kind of everybody a high level overview of what we're going to be dealing with as we get further into the operations. Until next time, guys, I will catch you in the next video.